Hi, Michael Larsen here again with another video of the amazing Amiga 3000. Today we are going to take a look at what's on the hard drives to try to understand what was this machine used for back in the 90s. Then I need to take backup of the hard drives, then reinstall Workbench 3.0, then play some games perhaps. But first, the Amiga 3000 is one of the most highly regarded. Let's have a closer look at its features to try to understand why. The Amiga 3000 is the successor to the old beast that is the Amiga 2000. I love how they look so different. The Amiga 2000 is a beast from the 80s, and the 3000 is an elegant and powerful computer released in 1990. The Amiga 3000 is the first Amiga with a faster 32-bit bus and with a new enhanced chipsets. The improved chips Denise and Agnes can now support 2 MB of chip RAM, twice as much as before. And you can now have higher resolutions like 1280 by 256 in 4 colors for productivity. Or you could, in 1990, install a graphics card that supports 1024 by 768 at 32-bit or even higher resolutions at 16 or 8-bit. And you would install it into the new and faster Zorro 3 32-bit expansion slot. The stock Amiga 2000 came with a 7 MHz 68000 CPU, no fast RAM. The Amiga 3000 has a much faster 68030 CPU running at 25 MHz, and it has a math core processor. Even if you upgrade the Amiga 2000 with a 68030 accelerator card, it is still not as fast as the Amiga 3000. You can also install 16 MB of RAM right on the motherboard, 128 MB in the CPU slot, and even 256 MB in each Zorro expansion slot. This computer from 1990 can support over a gigabyte of RAM. That's insane! This is also the only Amiga with a scan doubler built into the motherboard, thanks to the Amber chip. It will deinterlace the image, double the frequency output, and by using a VGA monitor, you get a sharper and cleaner picture. Imagine having a machine like this back in 1990. It must have been a dream machine to own something like this. But for most people like myself it would be way too expensive. But someone could afford it of course, like the person who bought this machine here. So let's go back and see what did they use this machine for. As you will see in the startup here, it will... Oh, you can't see it perhaps. Well, it's one of the earlier models, so it will uh, ask for a kickstart, for loading kickstart 2x. So back in the day, this computer was shipped, the earlier models was shipped with uh, an unfinished kickstart for the new operating system. So... They shipped it with a, like a buggy kickstart, then people would use a floppy disk and to load the extra files. Or the extra, extra files could also be on the drive itself. Yeah, that was not the best explanation, but to put it short, basically, yes, the kickstart that came with the machine is not completely finished. So they made it so that you can use kickstart file on a floppy disk or on the hard drive instead. It can be a bit more inconvenient, but also nice because you can just more easily change out the kickstart. And also this operating system has been upgraded uh, 40.68. I think that's uh, like 3.0 or 3.1. 3.1 RAM it says here. And in this machine you can see there's a lots of there's lots of programs here of different kinds. And I have been able to understand a bit more what this machine was used for. If I start probe right here, 
and open some documents. Like this one. This is in the Norwegian. I was wondering if I should open this, but there is not a lot of names and stuff here, so it should be fine. Uh, what it says here in this document is uh, is wondering about ways to make money. Here it says uh, programming microcomputers, ideas to what runtime can do, but from what I've read, he was trying to sell Amigas, for example, to different branches of companies. Here it says Amiga possibilities. Uh, he's talking about the biggest potential is in Scala info channel as information systems. He says here a lot of these um, is there a tra translator here? <laughs> Can I translate to English? But in the house where a lot of people are living, um, a lot of these have their own cable TV. And in the bigger buildings, it can be nice with, an, with their own information channel. So maybe they could use an Amiga to transmit a video to every, everyone who is living in that like, building. And give them information. And here it says there is a lot, there is a great deal of products that can be sold in conjunction with Scala Info Channel. Uh, he's thinking about things like Impact Vision, Canon Snapshot, Canon Ion, um, scanners, color printers, cheaper Genlocks, and RGB splitters. So he's thinking about selling extra add-ons as well, like if it was a regular electronics store. With the help of these network solutions, uh, Ad plus Ad Pro, an Amiga could easily integrate as a part of a sketching, drawing, image, manipulating, ray tracing part of a Mac uh, DTP environment, or as a video texting machine. So he was trying to sell Amigas and peripherals and software and everything. I guess that's why he has tons of different kinds of programs in here. As you can see here, Magic Icon, Discmaster, Zed, Deluxe Paint, Ad Pro, Imagine, Scala, SP Pro, Personal Draw, ProWrite, WordPerfect, yeah. Now let's have a look at some artwork from 1990. Church 640. Quite a nice church. Ingvill Mallory, that's Ingvill's painting. Load. Um, uh, maybe not. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So I am assuming this is a tail. Right? Let's say so. A very long tail. I don't think there is anything else here. So there's not a lot of artwork and animations and such, I'm afraid. There are some other stuff here. Maybe this was made on a 3D program of some kind? 
And now it's time to take backup of the hard drive and reinstall. And I was planning on filming this, and I did, but I did such a messy job, it wouldn't be so much fun to watch, I think. So let's skip right to the reinstalled machine. So the computer has now been reinstalled. So let's turn on the machine. Now it's clean. Here is my storage hard disk. Uh, it has, yeah, 161 megabytes free. And workbench disk is 40 megabyte disk. So now I can install anything I want, like uh, Deluxe Paint, Vista Pro perhaps. But I have made one very important purchase. A joystick. The other joystick I had was not good. So finally I have a great joystick. So I'm going to play some games. I have some floppies here. So let's try Nitro. Um, nothing is happening. Let's try Silkworm, I think it is. This, jo this joystick is so much better. But I should get auto fire because this joystick doesn't have auto fire function functioning. Uh, the oops, missed that one. The oh, previous owner he removed auto fire because it was a mess. Okay. That's weird. Is this computer not as compatible with games? Let's try again. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I could try skid marks, but it's like five diskettes. Oops. What is this? Is this not the game? Connect. So I don't understand. Isn't this a game? Doesn't look like it because connect. How can I play the game? What if I it into workbench. Okay. Um, close. What? F1. F so I have to press F1, F2, F1. NTA cars. Okay, so. <laughs> Okay.
Oops. And this was the easiest difficulty setting. Oops. <laughs> okay. Let's try again. I'm winning, I think. I will, I don't mess up. No! First. Well, got to play some Lotus 2. That is my favorite game when it comes to nostalgia. I love the music in this game. I love the game itself. I played it with my nephew in the multiplayer. I think the graphics in this map here, it's great, really great. And I also love the winter. It is still such an amazing game, I think. I haven't played it in a while. I could be wrong, but I think it runs a little bit faster on this machine. compared to my Amiga 500. Maybe I'm wrong, but it seems so. Ten seconds left. No, 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 no. No, no, no! Yes! <laughs> Okay, that one is difficult. I don't think I have ever completed this one. So I'm not going to try now. So that's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed having another look at the amazing Amiga 3000. Thank you also so much to the Amiga community for helping me all the time on Facebook and also on direct messaging. That really helps a lot. So I'm going to enjoy using this machine quite a lot. I'm going to make some more games on the floppies here and uh, I'm going to upgrade it and I'm going to expand it with not modern not modern uh, hardware but uh, stuff like uh, Picasso cards and such I hope in the future um, and um, network cards and such classic high-end hardware it doesn't have to be from 1990 or before the Amiga 4000 and 1200 came out but at least I would like to have uh, this on as a classic high-end machine well, when I get the 4000, that will be uh, the most high-end uh, Ultimate Amiga with modern solutions. That's my plan, at least. So there are more videos to come in the future. I have an Amiga 2000 that still needs to be repaired. I have an, Intelli an Intellivision 
and I need to make a video about that and also about restoring a 286 I just found in the dumpster and more stuff like that. So I hope you will consider subscribing if you like this sort of content and yeah, thanks for watching again and I hope to see you next time.